Uh, and I want to thank the witnesses for being here today, of course. NEPA began as a meaningful environmental protection bill, but has morphed into a bureaucratic monstrosity. NEPA has been used to stymie projects that advance the productivity, economic, and national security of this great nation. Extreme environmental activists have used NEPA more than any other regulation to bring frivolous lawsuits to not just stop oil and gas production, but even wind and solar projects, projects that you would think they would like to support. According to the Breakthrough Institute, because of excessive litigation, the average environmental impact to a statement takes four years to complete and be approved. It's pretty ridiculous. Because of the politicization of NEPA, cost increase, and more importantly, our adversaries that grow stronger, environmental groups have found their holy grail, and that is litigation. The only outcome is further harm to the American people and our families. I have a news flash for a lot of people. China, India, Saudi Arabia, Russia, Venezuela, they don't care about environmental regulations. We as a country try our best to improve. We do it cleaner, better, safer than anywhere in the entire world. Mr. Jenkins, with abundant and affordable energy in mind, how many of your projects are currently being litigated in the courts? So, Speaking on behalf of NRECA that represents 900 yes. co-ops across the nation, um, there are a handful that come top of mind. I don't know all of them, but there are examples in Wisconsin and in, in Texas that involve transmission lines that are causing great delays. I'm sorry, in Nebraska, not Texas. Um, and then uh, across the TVA service territory, there are ones that involve uh, the, the co-ops trying to, um, or in this case TVA, trying to convert coal to natural gas which is a great move for the environment and still facing litigation. So there are lots of examples. Those are a few I could get back with you with sure, more, please. but there are lots of examples. Yeah, please. I would like to have the full list actually, so we can definitely use that. So would you say, would you agree that the improvements that are in Chairman Westerman's bill are going to be very helpful to be able to produce more and be, and be more proactive? Yes, I would. The United States needs more pipeline, obviously. We need more generation. We need more transmission. Um, especially as we grow uh, as a country, and even in my district, I have the entire energy corridor in my district. Um, I'm the energy congressman of the world. That's what I tell myself every single day, at least. And I will tell you that when we first started off, there were about almost 800,000 people in my district after redistricting, and now there's roughly a million just in my district alone. So the insinuation that we need less transmission and to transfer or the word transition, which is the word that we don't use in my office, this is the word is actually addition, kind of proves that point. Uh, Mrs. Reams, my question for you is, would you agree uh, that changes uh, to Clean Water Act Section 401 to prevent activist states from using their environmental agendas to block projects would be important to include in permitting reform legislation? Specifically to the water bill, I can't address that, but I can tell you yep. certainly that clean energy is being thwarted by uh, an inefficient NEPA, NEPA process, indeed. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it. I yield back the rest of my time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you very much.